Today we are going to talk about the physioanatomy of the brain. I am Shavish Alkabi. Welcome, Merak Amikos. Hey, Merak Amikos. I hope you're doing great. So today we are going to talk about the physiology and the anatomy of the brain. In this lecture, we're going to cover some very basic concepts about the brain, the brain's anatomy and the brain's physiology, which will be very important for our next videos and lectures. So stay focused and also don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned for our other lectures as well because there will be a lot more structures that we won't be speaking about them today in this lecture we will talk about them in future lectures in physiology lectures and in other separate anatomical lectures okay so let's dive in so according to a classification the brain is divided into four major regions how many four major regions the cerebrum the diencephalon the brain stem and also the cerebellum which we are going to talk about each of them right now so let's start about let's start from the cerebrum right now okay so the cerebrum is the largest part of your brain. Look at this diagram. This is your brain stem right he here. This little kind of like a lung structure is your brain stem. This one is the cerebellum and all the other structures, all the lobes, all the colorful, colorful structures in here is included is your cerebrum, all of them. So cerebrum makes up the most parts of, uh, parts of your brain. The word cerebrum is a Latin word and it actually means brain. They call it cerebrum because it makes up the most parts of your brain. That's why they name this structure the cerebrum. Okay, so when you look at the cerebrum, you can see these kind of like swollen, bumped structures. Look at these. Look at these structures. They're kind of like protruding from the surface, kind of like bumped, swollen structures. These are called gyri. Okay, the singular for, for gyri is gyrus. The singular form is gyrus, the plural form is gyri. So all of these bumped, swollen structured tissues, these are all called gyri. And each of these gyrus or each of these gyri are separated via these shallow grooves called, look at this, these are called sulci. The singular form is sulcus. Sulcus, the singular form, and sulci, the plural form. So these are shallow grooves and they divide gyri. Okay, uh, so now there are some very important gyri in sulci that you have to remember and you have to learn them right now. The first one is the central sulcus in here. Look at this, this big sulcus, this long sulcus in here, this is called the central sulcus. It is called the central sulcus. Okay, at the front of the central sulcus, we have another sulcus in here. Look at this. This is anterior to the central sulcus, and this sulcus is called the precentral sulcus. This is the precentral sulcus. Pre means forward, so it's actually the sulcus which is located at the forward of the central sulcus. Look at this, it is at the forward of the central sulcus, and that's why it's called the pre-central sulcus. And we have another sulcus in here, it is called the post-central sulcus. Post-central sulcus. Guess why? Well, because it is located are posterior to the central sulcus. It is at the back of the central sulcus. So that is why it is called the post-central sulcus or, or the sulcus which is located at the posterior of the central sulcus. So these three sulci, the, sorry, these three sulci, the pre-central sulcus, the central sulcus, and the post-central sulcus, these three make up two gyri in here. This big gyrus in here, this is called the pre the post-central gyrus. This gyrus that you can see in here, look at it. This whole gyrus, this is called what? This is called the post-central gyrus. 
This is called the postcentral gyrus, which is located between the central sulcus and the postcentral sulcus. And we have another sulcus, which is called the precentral sulcus. Look at it. this whole sulcus, uh, sorry, this whole gyrus in here. This whole gyrus in here, this is called the precentral sulcus. The name actually gives you the exact location. Pre means forward, central, sorry, this is gyrus, not sulcus. Precentral gyrus. Okay, so it is called the precentral gyrus. The name actually gives you the location. Pre means forward, and the central refers to the central sulcus. So this is the gyrus which is located at the front or anterior to the central sulcus. And this gyrus in here, which is called the postcentral gyrus, is the gyrus located at the posterior of the central sulcus. That's why it's called the postcentral gyrus. And we have another very important sulcus in here. Look at this, this long sulcus in here, this whole long sulcus in here. This is called the lateral sulcus. This is called what? The lateral sulcus. So these are sulci and gyri, some very important gyri and sulci of your cerebrum. There are obviously other sulci and gyri in your brain, which we are not going to talk about them right now, but we are going to talk about them in separate anatomical, in separate anatomy videos and in the future physiology lectures. So if you haven't, then please hit those like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned so that you can uh, get access to our next uh, or future videos, okay? So for, now, uh, for, for right now, this much is enough. So uh, you can clearly see that uh, the four lobes of the cerebrum, look at this, the frontal lobe, this uh, lobe which is drawn in yellow color, this is your frontal lobe. This lobe at the middle drawn with blue color is your parietal lobe. This lobe at the back is your occipital lobe, and this lobe at the center, this is your temporal lobe. These are the four lobes of your cerebrum. But wait, there is one more lobe which is behind the frontal and the temporal lobe, and it's called the insula. It is called what? The insula. Insula. And this is the fifth lobe of your brain. Some texts excluded uh, the insula from the main classification of uh, classification of lobes in your uh, in your brain, but some texts included it. So actually, we have five lobes in the cerebrum. There are five lobes. We have the frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal, and the insula. Insula is located behind the frontal and the temporal lobe, it's somewhere right here, in here, behind these two. If you pull these two apart, pull the frontal and the uh, temporal lobe apart, then the insula is somewhere beneath them, okay? So these are the five lobes of your brain. Now, in these lobes, there are some very important functional areas and cortex, which, which do specific uh, functions in your brain, and they are very important for you to understand and to learn, because we were going to name them, we were going to mention them a lot in our future physiology lectures, okay? So, the very first important area is in your frontal lobe. Look at this, this whole region in here, can you see this, almost this whole precentral gyrus? Look at this, this whole precentral gyrus is your primary motor area. This is your primary motor area, this whole precentral gyrus. This is the primary, primary motor, motor area. The primary motor air area allows us to consciously move our skeletal muscles. So this is very important motor area in your body. There is another motor area, it is called the supplementary motor area. What is it called? Okay, I'm gonna point it out with black in here. This it is somewhere in here, okay? So this region in here, this is your supplementary motor area. Your supplementary motor 
area this area is very important and it is involved in complex movements of our body so it coordinates our complex movements and the primary motor area uh, actually allows us to consciously move our skeletal muscles so this is our primary motor area and this is the supplementary motor area we have another area at the post central gyrus on the parietal lobe right here look at this look at this this whole pre central post central gyrus this is the area for somatosensory cortex or the som this is called the somato somato sensory area somatosensory area so all the informations from our sensory receptors are brought to this area and in this area all of those sensory informations are being interpreted or translated so this is a translation area or an interpretation area for all the sensory informations that our sensory receptors take so we also have another very important area in here okay i'm going to point that out with black as well it is right here okay sorry in here this is called the brocus area this region is the broca brocus area so the brocus area is the peak area it helps us uh, to speak the brocus area is involved in speaking we have another area in here look at this we have a very important areas in here in the parietal lobe this area is called the wernix area wernix area Wernicke's area is also speech area. It is involved in language comprehension. Broca's area is also a speech area. Wernicke's area is also a speech area. The difference is that in Broca's area, the Broca's area is involved in the ability of speaking, but the Wernicke's area is involved in language comprehension, language understanding, comprehension of language. That is the Wernicke's area. We have another area in here, which is the auditory area. Look at this, this region in here. Okay, let's use another color. Let's use, okay, red for this. All right, so this is your, what? Auditory area. This is the auditory area. or the hearing area all right we have another area that is called the olfaction area the olfactory area it is also in the deep inside the temporal lobe this lo the, the, this area is in uh, this this area is located deep inside deep within the temporal lobe and it's called the olfactory area this is our olfactory area and we also have another very important area which, uh, com which, which includes almost all the occipital lobe. It is called the visual area. The visual area is a big area, large area, which uh, comprises almost the whole occipital lobe. This is our visual cortex or the visual area. So these are some very important functional anatomy points and structures that you have to remember, okay? So look at all these areas. We have the motor area, the primary motor area uh, in the precentral gyrus. We have the little supplementary motor area in here. We have the somatosensory area in here. We have the two speech areas, the brocus area in here and the Wernicke's area in here. And we have the auditory area on the temporal lobe and deep within the temporal lobe, we have the olfactory area. And the visual cortex or the visual area comprises almost all the occipital lobe. So these are all the functional cortexes, the functional areas of your brain. 
you have to remember them very carefully you have to remember them very precisely okay so now let's talk about the regions the deep regions of the cerebral hemispheres okay I forgot something that uh, I should have mentioned this earlier but it doesn't matter I'm going to tell it to you right now uh, that the cerebrum is made up of two cerebral hemispheres. How many two, cerebrals hem two cerebral hemispheres? The left and the right. Okay, so this is a diagram of the cerebral hemisphere. The two cerebral hemispheres are divided via a long fissure. There is a long fissure at the top. It is called the medial longitudinal fissure, which divides the two cerebral hemispheres. And again, the two cerebral hemispheres are combined together, are connected together via a C-shaped structure of white matter called the corpus callosum. This is your corpus callosum. The two cerebral hemispheres are connected together via this corpus callosum, okay? It is a C-shaped structure of white matter. So now, when you look at the cerebral hemisphere from a sagittal section, you can clearly see that there are some gray shaded areas at the top or at the periphery of the cerebral hemisphere. These uh, shaded areas, okay, these are gray matter. These are all gray matter and they make up the cortex of the cerebral hemisphere, which is called the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is made out of uh, gray matter and is located at the periphery of the cerebral hemisphere. And beneath the cerebral cortex is a dense tissue of white matter. All these regions are white matter, uh, which is called the cerebral white matter, okay? Now, deep inside the cerebral white matters, uh, ma matter are some regions of gray matter, okay? Let's use another color for this. Okay, so deep in the, within, uh, inside the cerebral uh, white matter are these areas. Look at this, these gray areas. Kind of like islands of gray matter. These are called basal nuclei or basal ganglia. What are they called? They are your basal nuclei or basal ganglia. And we have four types of them. There are four types of basal nuclei or basal ganglia. The first one is called the striatum. It's striatum. The second one is called globus pallidus. Globus Pallidus. The third one is the subthalamic nuclei. Subthalamic nuclei. And finally, we have the substantia nigra. Substantia nigra. All right, so these are the four main basal nuclei. The striatum, globus pallidus, subthalamic nuclei, and substantia nigra. And the stri uh, striatum is also composed of two other nuclei, caudate and putamen. These are the two nuclei of the striatum. These are the basal nuclei. They are located deep inside the cerebral, hem uh, the cerebral white matter. So the cerebral white matter also has these uh, special fiber tracts. They are called the association fiber tracts and the uh, projection fiber tracts. So there are how many types of fiber tracts? There are four, two types of fiber tracts. You can find them in the cerebral hemisphere. Look at this. Two fiber tracts. Association fiber tracts and also projection. Projection fiber tracts. Okay, these are the two fiber tracts, association fiber tracts, and projection fiber tracts. Association fiber tracts are those fibers which they connect two areas within the same hemisphere. They connect areas within 
the hemispheres, but the projection fiber tracks, they connect an area of the cerebral hemisphere uh, to the lower centers of the CNS. So association two areas within hemispheres and projections an area of the cerebral hemisphere to the lower CNS centers, okay? These are the fiber tracts that you can find them in the cerebral white matter, okay? They are the white matter fiber tracts. Don't forget these, my friends. So look at these structures. We can see some really cool structures in the cerebral hemispheres as well. As I said before, this yellow structure is called the corpus callosum. This is a C-shaped structure of white matter, which connects the two cerebral hemispheres. Okay, this uh, red structure in here, okay, this is called the hippocampus. Let me write this. This is called the hippo. Campus, which literally means seahorse. This is a Latin word, which literally means seahorse. So this is a structure which resembles sort of like a seahorse. And the hippocampus is very important for memory formation and spatial navigation. For what? For memory formation and spatial spatial navigation okay now the hippocampus extends to another curve the structure which is called the fornix look at this uh, orange structure in here okay let me use the orange color okay so this orange color in here this is called the fornix okay what is it called? This is called the fornix. And fornix has fibers which connect the hippocampus. Fornix connects the hippocampus to other centers of the cerebral hemisphere. And it's also very important for memory formation. So next we have another structure in here. Look at this little structure, little dude in here. He is called the amygdala. Amygdala, okay? The word literally, literally means almond. Amygdala actually means almond. So this is an almond-like structure. All right, so the amygdala is a very important structure which is involved in emotions, particularly, particularly fear and aggression. So this little guy in here, he is the bad boy for your fear and aggression, okay? So this was all the structures of the cerebral hemisphere regions. This was all about the cerebrum. All right, now let's talk about the diencephalon. All right, Amico, so diencephalon is the second major region of your brain. It sits atop the brain stem and it, and it is enclosed via the cerebral hemisphere. The cerebral hemisphere is covering the diencephalon and it sits atop, it is located atop the brain stem. So the diencephalon uh, is composed of these uh, structures. This green structure is called the thalamus. It is the thalamus, thalamus. Okay, this next uh, structure, this, this little tiny structure is called your epithalamus. This is the epi thalamus and this is structure little big structure orange color this is called your hypothalamus this is your hypothalamus and this little structure in here this is called the mammillary gland this is what this is the mammillary gland sorry it's called the mammillary body not the mammillary gland excuses okay this is called the mammillary body all right so now let's talk about thalamus a little bit okay so thalamus is kind of like a checkpoint station 
for sensory signals. Whenever sensory signals wants to reach the cortex of your brain, the sensory cortex, the sensory areas of your cerebral hemispheres, they have to be first checkpointed on the thalamus. So, they, so thalamus is kind of like a checkpoint area for sensory impulses coming from the sensory receptors and traveling to the sensory areas of your cerebral hemisphere, okay? So thalamus is a checkpoint station for sensory impulses. Now, look at this little area in here. Here is called the epithalamus. The epithalamus is composed of two other regions. The pineal gland and also the choroid plexus, choroid plexus. The pineal gland is an endocrine, it's part of the endocrine system. And the choroid plexus is very important for the formation of cerebrospinal fluid, okay? Very important for the, for the formation of CSF or cerebrospinal fluid. So this is the epithalamus. Now look at this biggest structure in here. Here is called the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus makes the floor of the diencephalon. It makes the floor of the diencephalon. And my friends, the hypothalamus does a lot of things in our body. The hypothalamus is part of our limbic system, which we will talk about them in future lecture. It is part of the limbic system, okay? Or part of the limbic system is also called the emotion visceral brain of our body. It is uh, important for the regulation of temperature in our body. It controls water concentration. Okay, it controls uh, the overall metabolism of your body. And it is very important. It actually regulates your pituitary gland. It regulates your pituitary, pituitary glands. And it is very obvious that whoever has an access to the pituitary gland, whatever in our body that can uh, regulate the pituitary gland does, can, does a lot of things in our body. So that is our hypothalamus. It has full access to our pituitary gland. All right, so we have the mammillary body as well. The mammillary body is... Uh, it has reflex centers, reflex centers involved in olfaction, the sense of smell, olfaction, reflex centers in, uh, involved in the olfaction, okay? So these are all the structures of the diencephalon, your thalamus, epithalamus, hypothalamus, and the mammillary body. Now let's talk about the third region of our brain. It is called the brain stem. So we have a very beautiful and precise diagram of the brain stem in here. This whole, this big structure in here is our thalamus, okay? The thalamus is not included in our brain stem. This next structure, this blue structure in here, okay, let me name it with this, the same color. This structure in here, this blue structure, he is called the midbrain. The midbrain, also called the mesencephalon. Midbrain or the mesencephalon. The midbrain is made out of these fibers called cerebral peduncles. Look at these uh, structures, okay? These long, long structures. These are your cerebral pe peduncles. Cerebral peduncles are actually uh, fibers, they convey ascending and descending impulses. They are called cerebral peduncle. They convey uh, impulses, descending and ascending impulses. So this is your midbrain. And uh, posterior to the, uh, the midbrain is, there are these four twins, four rounded structures. Look at this two uh, superior and two inferior. These four structures are called corpora quadrigemina. These are also part of the midbrain. What are they called? They are called corpora quadrigemina. Corpora means bodies. Corpora means bodies. 
and quadrigemina means four twins, four twins. So these are four twins, okay? Two superior and two inferior. And uh, separately, they are, they are called the superior colliculi and the inferior colliculi. So these two are your superior colliculi and these two are your, your inferior colliculi. All right, so and corpora quadrigemina is involved in hearing and vision. In what? In hearing and vision. The superior colliculi, these are the superior colliculi and these are the inferior colliculi and they are part of the midbrain or mesencephalon. So the midbrain, uh, so, sorry, posterior, uh, inferior to the midbrain is this red structure. Let's use the red color for that. It is called, this is structure is called the pons. So look at this kind of like bulging, sw swollen structure coming out, protruding outward. This is your pons. All right, so pons is made out of these fibers, mostly fibers, and these contain nuclei, which are very important for, and, and they are involved in breathing. Pons contain nuclei, which are involved in breathing. Okay, let me, well, let me write this. Pons is very important for breathing because it has nuclei in, involved in the process of breathing. So inferior to the pons, this structure in here is called the medulla oblongata. Let's use the specific color. This structure right here, this bulging structure, he is called the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is, sorry, the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is very important and it is involved in vital visceral activities, vital internal activity, uh, activities, okay? For example, uh, heart rate, blood pressure, breathing, swallowing, uh, vomiting, these are all controlled by your medulla oblongata. So the medulla oblongata is responsible for vital visceral activities. Vital visceral activities. So these are the three parts of your brain stem. The midbrain, midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. There are some fibers extending all over the brain stem. These fibers are called the reticular formation. Okay? These fibers are the reticular, look at these fibers, they extend almost the entire length of the uh, brain stem. So they are called the reticular formation. Reticular formation. Reticular formation contain two very specific, uh, specific structures. One is gray matter structures <coughs> Sorry, a structures made out of gray matter and also a, a system called the reticular activating, activating system. So the gray matter of the reticular formation is involved in motor control of visceral organs, involved in motor control, control, motor control of visceral organs. Motor control of visceral organs. And the reticular activating system, uh, this contain special neurons, special neurons of the reticular, forma uh, the reticular formation neurons. They are involved in consciousness. They play a very important role in consciousness and also the sleep-awake cycle. They are involved in what? In consciousness, in consciousness and the awake sleep cycle. All right, so one more thing about the brain stem is that the length of the brain stem is almost three inches. The brain stem is almost three inches long. And uh, 
in diameter it is the size of a thumb in diameter the size of a thumb and in length about three inches so this is your brain stem now let's talk about the cerebellum the last <coughs> major part of your brain okay all right amico so cerebellum is the fourth major region of your brain Cerebellum is a cauliflower, large cauliflower-like structure just be beneath the uh, occipital lobe. So it is also made up of two uh, hemispheres, hemispheres, right and left hemispheres. And it's also made out of gray matter and white matter. It is made out of a cortex of gray matter, an outer cortex. Look at that. This is the outer cortex of gray matter and also inner regions of white matter. And the cerebellum is important and involved in balance, control, and equilibrium. It is involved in balance and equilibrium. All right, there, Medic Amicos, we are done for today. So this was all about the physioanatomy of the brain. I hope it was useful. I hope you can use this. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and share this video with your friends. We'll see you in the next lecture.